Melbourne is synonymous with coffee. Every suburb is veritably oozing with cafes. Behind minimalist decor and underneath industrial lighting that looks like it's been liberated straight from the 50s, apron-clad baristas ply their trade and serve up magics, pour-overs and cold brews. For every cafe or hole-in-the-wall coffee shop hidden down an alley, there are a line of customers eagerly waiting their soy latte, long white or short black. It is the 1880s and in response to drunkenness, anti-social behaviour and drinking in excess, a social movement known as the temperance movement saw more and more people abstaining from alcohol. The move away from alcohol meant the move away from pubs. Where then will people go to socialise? Enter the coffee palaces. In 1888, one such palace was built on Collins Street. The Federal Hotel and Coffee Palace was built, an enormous four-storey architectural marvel constructed in the Second Empire style. To put the scale into perspective, the hotel contained 370 guest rooms and a penthouse suite located in the tower. It became a social hub in Melbourne and coffee culture started brewing. In 1890, the bearing crisis led to Australian bank crashes and coffee palaces found themselves struggling. Booze returned to the scene, but the taste for coffee remained. The 1930s saw the introduction of the espresso. Before that, all coffee was percolated and tea was still favoured. But the espresso machine found its way into Melbourne businesses and coffee flourished. The end of the Second World War gave rise to the adoption of European coffee culture in Melbourne. But, like many of Australia's culinary successes, the triumph of Australian coffee is inseparable from immigration. In the wake of World War II, Italian immigrants started to bring coffee machines to Australia. The espresso bars that began to imprint themselves across Sydney and Melbourne had an appeal that went beyond the Italian migrant communities operating them. With their new decorating styles, they attracted an aspiring social set of Australian bohemians who were joined by teenagers, bored of the old style milk bars and steak pubs. Australia, despite a strong current of anti-migrant sentiment, was uniquely placed to embrace this new coffee culture. By the 1960s, a small mix of bohemians, teenagers and migrants were gathering around coffee spots. Coffee was also still pretty expensive in the wake of World War II. In 1951, it was 10 times more expensive than tea. However, the gentrification of inner city suburbs over time helped fuel coffee culture. The next wave of inner city rejuvenation and gentrification was from the early 1980s and a new wave of bohemian cafes gave coffee another significant boost. Australia's relatively high standard of living also played a part. People had the time to enjoy a cuppa as a social experience and the access to the capital needed to open cafes. By the 2000s, coffee shops mostly independently owned had become a very competitive scene and the trend stretched beyond the hip streets of inner city neighbourhoods. So just how much do Melburnians love their coffee? I conducted a survey amongst Richmond High School staff and of this survey, 70% of the staff drink coffee, 30% do not drink, 53% drink two coffees per day, 42% of teachers drink coffee more than once a week, and 30% of teachers met up, meet up for a coffee once per week, pre-COVID days, of course. From this survey, the top two favourite coffees were flat white and cappuccino. This actually is quite different to a national survey where it said that Victoria's favourite coffee was a latte. Quite controversial, Richmond High staff. Responsible drinking. <sighs> and where do you pay the most for a cup of coffee? Northern Territory. I guess that's because it's so isolated and far away or maybe there's not the same demand for coffee. The national survey also said that we like to drink coffee between 9 a.m. and 11 a.m., with three o'clock being the best time or most preferred time to drink a matcha. So what do you call a person who makes the coffees? A barista. A barista is a person who prepares and also generally serves espresso-based coffee drinks. Generally, baristas working in coffee houses, coffee shops, or coffee bars operate commercial espresso machines rather than home espresso machines. Beyond making espresso, baristas also generally foam, froth, and steam milk to make a wide range of espresso-based drinks and prepare coffee drinks such as French press coffee, pour-over coffee, and drip coffee. The World Barista Championship, also known as WBC, 
is a competition that is held on an annual basis and that is organised by World Coffee Events to determine who is the best barista in the world that year. This barista competition was introduced in Norway and its first event took place at Monte Carlo in 2000. It was held in Europe and America until 2007 when it was hosted in Tokyo. To decide who will be the world's best barista, there are three judging stages held over two days. In every round, the participants will perform a 15 minute drill in which they have to serve a total of 12 beverages to each of the four judges. They have to serve four espressos, four milk based beverages and four original signature drinks. There are two types of judges, sensory and technical. Melbourne won in 2013 with barista Pete Licata. This is Tom and he runs my local coffee bar with his brother and father. It is called Bin 3. On a busy day, my local barista Tom makes 330 to 350 coffees. He says the most popular coffee is a latte, which again is in line with our national survey. What's going on Richmond High Staff? I think the one thing that my survey of Richmond High staff did show is that they were all 100% correct when they said Melbourne is the best place to buy and drink or even go for a coffee.